Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the live stream of our worship service from Centerville Baptist Church. It is the first Sunday of Advent, the Sunday where we focus our attention on the great hope that we have that one day our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come back to earth rescue us and take us to the new heaven and the new earth. Good morning, earth. everyone. Today, Welcome as to we worship, stream I pray that even in the midst Centerville of these Baptist COVID Church, days, that it God is would bless Sunday you as you Advent, prepare for Christmas. Sunday where we I just want you to know that our church building is temporarily closed down. Day, our Lord uh, and from Savior now Jesus until Christ December the 10th, all of our ministries Rescue will take place take online the heaven, with the, the increasing everyone, cases today, in Halifax we and our prop, close proximity to it. We wanted to take this extra step to keep you safe. So we'll let you know when our building is open again so that we can come and worship together. In the meantime, uh, my prayer is that God would speak to you through our live stream. There's a couple of announcements that I want to point out to you today. Uh, the first is an invitation to attend the deep dive following our worship service today. You can see on your screen is a Zoom link and I invite you to write that down or to copy it. And then after our church service, our we invite stream. you to There's go deeper uh, into the topic of to hope point that I'm going to, to discuss today. for you today. Uh, the first is because we can't gather and meet to tonight for our evening worship, our uh, we are worship going to today. invite you, you to watch on your screen the first Zoom episode in the series The Chosen about Jesus' life. We're going to meet together at 7.30. There's a variety of options uh, for you to do that. If you need a DVD, we'll see that one gets taken to you. Or you can watch it on YouTube, or you can watch it on PureFlix. Or those of you who are used to joining us for online Bible studies, uh, you can join through Zoom, and then we uh, will all watch it as I share my screen. And then following watching it, we'll enter into a Zoom room uh, where we'll fellowship and discuss the movie. There's a couple of opportunities that I invite you to consider over Christmas. Canadian Baptist Ministries, in their Hopeful Gifts program, has invited us uh, to give to those who are hurting in Lebanon. And I would ask that you would consider this uh, there is a website that we can go to to track our giving, and I would encourage you to do this. The monies that we give will be uh, used to provide things like bedding for those whose lives have been disrupted by COVID, by the war in Syria, by the explosion that is there. And we are also going to work hand in hand with their seminary as they reach out to many people. So I would invite you to consider giving through that. Uh, you can go online to the website. Uh, links will be provided and you can give that way uh, or through your offering envelope. All you need to do is put your gift in it and mark Lebanon on it. Closer to home, we want to invite you to participate again into our Christmas hamper program. Once again, we are going to be providing hampers for 12 families, uh, and we look forward to being able to do this again. In order to keep you safe, instead of asking you to sign up to buy things and then go shopping, we have designated one or two people who will do all the shopping. And if you would like to participate this year, we ask that you would bring your financial gift uh, to the church and that you would put it in the mail slot on the church door. It will be checked on a daily basis. Or again, uh, if you want to put it in your offering uh, envelope and you just need to mark on it Christmas hampers so that we can uh, get these 12 hampers filled this year. We look forward to your participation in one or perhaps both of these programs. That's all of the announcements that I have. Uh, I invite you now to come with me as I go to the Advent wreath and light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. Today, we light one purple candle. 
the candle of hope. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. We wait for the day when we celebrate again the birth of Jesus. We hope that everyone will come to know God and to worship God. When we look at the first candle, we remember God's promise. God promised to send a Savior to the people. When we listen to our scripture reading, we hear what the prophet Isaiah wrote about God. God is the potter who molds. We know that the gospel witness is one that helps us understand that God is loving and just. God brings peace, and this gives hope. We anticipate again the birth of the baby Jesus. Remembering Jesus helps us know God's love for us. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the birth of your son Jesus. Your son that brought hope into the world. Your son that brought a sense of expectancy. The Savior, the Messiah had arrived. And Father, we stand at a time in history after the birth of Christ, waiting for the second advent of Christ. And we ask that today you would help us to have that same sense of hope and expectancy. For I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to uh, sing along at home with our worship team. Uh, as they sing three songs for us. So uh, this next song is one we introduced a few weeks ago called Run to the Father. And uh, we can always run to the Father, no matter where we are in our lives. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. Deep in my chest, your mercy. 
mercy is calling out just as I am you pull me in and I know I need you now I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart needs a surgeon my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again. I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart found a surgeon, my soul found a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again and again. going to sing now a song that we did a few weeks ago and uh, I won't say who but a lady approached me uh, the following week and said you sang my favorite song last week and I wasn't here and I didn't get to hear it because there were problems with it online so we're going to do it just especially for her this morning and that's the creation song. I have felt 
felt the wind blow, whispering your name. I have seen your tears fall when I watched the rain. Right. And our next song is also, I'm sure, an old favorite for many of you. And I know it's going to be difficult because you're going to want to stand for this, but I will ask you to stay seated. We're going to sing Standing on the Promises of God, but we're going to be singing it seated. Said the night wind to the little lamb Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb Do you see what I see? A star, a star Dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite With a tail as big as a kite Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy do you hear what I hear? A song, a song High above the trees With a voice as big as the sea With a voice as big as the sea Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king Do you know what I know? 
In your palace warm, mighty king Do you know what I know? A child, a child Shivers in the cold Let us bring him silver and gold Let us bring him silver and gold Said the king to the people everywhere Listen to what I say Pray for peace, people everywhere The child, the child Sleeping in the night He will bring us goodness and light He will bring us goodness and lies. Do you hear what I hear? With what attitude should we pray? And the answer to that is with love perseverance and gratefulness in humble submission to God's will, knowing that for the sake of Christ, he always hears our prayers. And that question and answer is based on Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 that says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. I invite you now to bow your heads as we talk to God in prayer. Father God, we worship you with great hope in our hearts today on this, the first Sunday of Advent. Perhaps like few other times in our life do we appreciate the hope that Jesus brought into the world. We live amidst difficult times, O oh God. The pandemic swirls all around us. We see increases in cases in many countries, even here in Canada. And now in our own province, we see the number of cases grow. Father, help us not to give up hope. Help us to move beyond trusting just in medical science. Help us to see and trust in Jesus the Messiah. He is our hope of a better tomorrow. Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that we receive from your hand as we live here for you. But we realize that this world is not our home. We were made for something better. And this is our great hope, that one day Jesus will return, not as a babe in a manger, but as a triumphant king, that he will ride to earth in the clouds of chariots, and all the world will know that he is king. Help us to keep this thought in the midst, in the forefront of our minds this year as we celebrate his birth. We confess that it's a, a difficult time and discouraging, depressing, not being able to get together during the holiday season with family and friends the way we wished it. But God, help us not to give up hope. Fill us with your spirit anew. Today, as we worship and look at the prophet Isaiah, we ask that you would speak to us from your word. We pray for those who are sick, either at home or in hospital. And we continue to lift them before you, asking that you, the great physician, would heal. We also pray today for those who are discouraged. We pray that you 
would send your spirit upon them and encourage them. We pray for those who have not yet experienced the hope that comes from having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we ask that this year you would lead them even as you have led us. For those who, are, who mourn, we pray that they would be comforted. These are our prayers, and we offer them up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Next, we are going to play a promo for you of episode one of The Chosen. Um, we hope that this will just whet your appetite and you'll want to come back at 7.30 tonight as we watch and discuss the first in this series. Excuse me. I have something for you. For me. Throw this down for a catch. Uh, I don't have a quarrel with you, teacher. But we've been doing this all night. Nothing. All right. fruit here is incredible. Everything that grows here is immaculate. Except for the people. You're such a miserable lot. You worship one God, and yet you're all divided. Only one language keeps their peace. None to speak it. You are the great Nicodemus. And I serve only God. Yes. Yes, so do your enemies. Rogue preachers in the wilderness, raving about a coming Messiah. Sam, you're scared. I've lost everything. I've burnt every bridge. If I don't catch a ton of fish or get some help somehow, they'll arrest me. I'm trapped. No more talking, Simon. Maybe God can get your attention now. Hi. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. I saw him. It was incredible. You have experienced a miracle. You are healed. What do you want from me? Follow me. He performs miracles and seeks no credit? Who did this? I don't know his name. His time for men to know has not yet come. We, we waited for you for so long, we believe. You have much bigger things ahead of you, Simon, son of Jonah. Anything is possible now, don't you see? Would you at least know him if you saw him again? <laughs> I will know him for the rest of my life. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dallas, director of The Chosen. You know, last year, over 15,000 people from around the world crowdfunded a record-breaking $10 million to create an original series outside the Hollywood system. And we created this so the world can experience Jesus in a way that's never been done before. And what you just saw is a glimpse of season one. Go to thechosen.tv and you'll get a free 48-hour pass to watch episode one in advance. This project has been an incredible ride and we'd love for you to join us. This morning's scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people 
walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning and will be fuel for fire. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. May God bless the reading of his holy word this morning. This morning I want to speak a message to you entitled, Don't Miss the Boat. Don't miss the boat. Now, this expression has become colloquial in our language, and it refers for any time where we might miss a deadline. But sometimes in our life, it is used quite literally. If you've ever traveled to an island, you know exactly what this means, that there's a certain time of departure that the ferry leaves, and you need to make sure that you're on the ferry before it sails out of the dock. Now, there have been a few times in my life where I've experienced not missing the boat. I remember one time in particular when I was a student at Atlantic Baptist College. I had a car, a little Honda Civic hatchback, and it was my job to take a group of students to Grand Manan Island. Now, if you're not familiar with Grand Manan Island, it is off of New Brunswick, uh, you go through St. John, and uh, you grab the, the ferry on the other side of, of St. John. I believe the community is called Black's Harbor. And there you sail across to Grand Manan. And so going in that direction uh, was no trouble. We went over uh, on a Saturday and uh, arrived. Uh, we settled in with our host families. And then we had the afternoon to tour the island uh, before enjoying supper again and spending the evening. On Sunday, we went and had our church service. The gospel team uh, sang. And uh, then we spent the rest of Sunday on the island. And Monday morning, we had to get up bright and early to catch that ferry as, uh, as it left and sailed uh, back to the mainland. And what a lot of people did as they were waiting for the ferry is they actually had an old car that they left there to mark their spot. Now, being a visitor to the island, we weren't so lucky, so it increased the chances that we might miss the boat. Uh, the residents had figured out how they could save their spot and get there every time, but us guests to the island, uh, it was real challenge. The challenge was made worse for me because when I went out to start my car, I heard the click, 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 click when I turned the key. The battery was dead, and I looked quickly around and realized that the lights had been left on overnight. Now, fortunately for me, uh, my car was a five-speed, uh, which means that I was able to um, get some of my ride out of the car, and uh, we were let uh, one of the ladies that was with us uh, steer it, and we pushed it back on the road and pushed it uh, on the road. Now, as we did that, I began to panic a little bit. I'm going to miss the boat. I'm going to miss the boat. And so, in my haste, I forgot to give one important instruction to the driver of the vehicle. And that, anybody that's ever jumped a vehicle knows that you first need to turn the ignition on. And so, there we were, pushing and pushing this car down the road for all we were worth, uh, she would pop the clutch, and the car wouldn't go. And all of us now began to panic that we were going to miss the boat. 
Well, very quickly I realized the error of my ways and I went to the front and stopped and pointed out the fact that you need to turn the car on if you're going to jump it. We did that and the engine revved to life and long story short we were able to make the ferry and able to sail across to the mainland and back to our studies at the college on, on early Monday afternoon. I don't know if that story resonates uh, with you, but maybe some of you have been in danger of missing the boat in a quite literal sense. This morning I want to talk to you about missing the boat in a figurative sense. That an event happens and we miss it. Has that ever happened to you? That something significant happened around you and it just totally bypassed you? Whether it was a show that you were watching on TV and following from week to week and you miss an episode and you go to work or go to school the next day and everybody's talking about it and you think, oh, I missed the boat. I should have watched that show and I didn't. Or maybe it was a sporting event and you're watching a baseball game and you missed a, a baseball hero like Hank Aaron hit a home run, one of the longest blasts that he ever hit. And you were just too tired to stay up and watch that night, so you went to sleep, and you missed the boat. This morning, I want to talk to you about how that can apply to our spiritual lives. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today. Excuse me. I want to talk to you for a few minutes today of what happened in the life of Israel. You see, in Israel... They had heard the prophets prophesy about the coming Messiah. And they, in the first century, were so preoccupied with the hardness of life, with how the Romans ruled over them, that they completely missed it. When the type of Messiah that they were expecting didn't arrive, because they had misinterpreted the prophets. And when that baby was born in Bethlehem, they missed the significance. And when that baby grew to be a young man and lived among them and taught like a rabbi, they missed the significance. And when that man was hung on a cross, they missed the fact that he was the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. They thought he was just a religious zealot or a political enthusiast that tried to overthrow Roman rule. They missed the boat. And we need to ask ourselves the question this morning, can that happen to us as well? Is it possible that we become so preoccupied in life here and now that when the Messiah returns for his second advent, that we missed it? Is it possible that we become so focused with tunnel vision on the hardness of life in the midst of a pandemic, that if Jesus were to return now in 2020, we would miss it? Could that be possible? And yet it was in the first century because of the hardness of the people's hearts. They weren't sensitive to the gospel message. The scripture says in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 2, The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness on them a light has shined. These were the words of the prophet Isaiah as he spoke to a group of people, to a community that was experiencing the hardness of life. A community that had experienced the Assyrians come in and conquer their land. They had seen Zebulon and Naphtali fall prey to the Assyrians and life was difficult. So difficult. And yet Isaiah encourages them and they said, and he said, the Messiah is coming. 
the Messiah, the light for which we need in the midst of the darkness for what we walk will come and will shine on us. This morning, I want to dive deep into this text so that we understand its meaning and so we are prepared for the second advent of Jesus. During the time that Isaiah wrote, the people were living in difficulty. The Assyrians, led by Tilkath Pelissar III, had come in and had conquered. The people were experiencing food shortages, not to mention a whole host of persecution like what would happen when an enemy came and conquered your land. The passage says that in the past, God allowed for the humbling of the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, and that referred to that invasion. It was difficult times. Difficult times. How the people yearned to get out from under the weight and the burden of this difficulty. And yet, they waited. They waited. And they waited. Perhaps you today can appreciate what they went through. Perhaps you can appreciate the difficulty as we live through a pandemic. Our times are difficult. We watch the news each day wondering how many more people will be inflicted with this virus. It's difficult times. We look ahead to Christmas that should be a joyous occasion, and yet we know it's going to be difficult, that for many you won't be able to get together with family and friends. It's difficult times really difficult times. Isaiah, he doesn't leave the people there in this passage. He doesn't say, this is what life is like. Buckle up. Life is hard. We need to adapt. Instead, Isaiah reminds the people that the future looked bright. The future looked bright. How did it look bright? Well, he talked and he said, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. Why was the future bright? The future was bright for one reason. And one reason alone. That was Jesus. For those of you who are watching today on our live stream, maybe you're experiencing this difficult time. Maybe you feel overwhelmed because of the pandemic. Maybe you are, are really regretting not being able to be with family and friends during this Christmas season. Don't give up hope. Isaiah, Isaiah said that Jesus is our hope that Jesus is our hope and during this time we experience difficulty but we look forward to a time when there isn't going to be any more pain we look forward to a time when there will be no more pandemics we look forward to a time when there'll be no more disease and no more sickness we look forward to a time when all of life will be perfect, when we experience what we were created to have, a life that is perfect, filled with beauty all around us, a life where we'll get to worship God face to face because sin will be no more. Friends, Jesus is coming again. That's our hope. We endure pain now, 
But we look forward with anticipation and with expectancy that Jesus is going to come back again. That's what helps us keep going. That's what makes us put one step in front of the other. That's our great hope. Isaiah goes on and he says, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. The zeal of the Lord. You know what zealous means? Zealous is the both enthusiasm and ability to get something done. And that's what this passage says, that the Lord Almighty, the one who had the power to create the whole world, has promised that he is going to get this done. You can bank on it happening. When you put your head on your pillow at night, you may wonder, God, is this ever going to end? Are we really going to be able to get a, a vaccine so that life will return to what it was like before? God says to you today, you have hope, but your hope isn't in this world. Your hope is in the next. Isaiah reminds us that Jesus is coming again. And even though he's delayed his return for almost 2,000 years, we know that he does that for a purpose so that others will come and begin a relationship with God through him. So that others will be pardoned for the wrong that they have done and will be adopted into God's family. That's why Jesus waits. But do not confuse waiting with the event not happening because God said so. It is going to happen. The zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. As you listen to me today, what is your sense of expectancy? Do you feel this great hope deep within your inner spirit? Maybe some of you say, Pastor Steve, I don't feel like that. I feel like the weight of the world is on my shoulders and I, I'm so focused on the, the here and now that it's difficult for me to look ahead. How can we develop a spirit of expectancy? Well, I'm going to suggest three things to you today that will help you. The very first that you need to do is be willing to wait. Be willing to wait. Few like waiting, whether it's waiting in our cars outside of a doctor's office for our appointment to go in, whether it's standing in a line outside of the Access Nova Scotia waiting for our turn to go in and renew our license, whether we're in a line outside of a grocery store waiting for our turn to be able to go in. We've had to, to wait like none other time in our life during COVID. And we don't like it. And yet, God calls us not to give up hope, but to stay and wait. And so the very thing, first thing I want us to do is to watch ourselves to be sure that we don't become weary of waiting, but in that time of waiting, to make it as productive a time as we possibly can. You know, we can wait and twiddle our thumbs, or we can wait and engage our minds as we're waiting maybe meditating on the Word of God or praying and talking to God, or maybe dreaming about what the future will be like. Which leads me to the second thing that we can do. Not only do we need to, to stay and wait, but we can dream a big dream. 
Have you ever wondered what heaven will be like? Have you ever wondered what this planet will be like once sin stain is taken from it? Ever wonder what it would be like to have all of the animals that were extinct back on the planet again? Do you ever wonder what it would be like to be involved in relationships that roll along smoothly with never a hiccup? Dream a big dream. Or as you wait, maybe you want to dream a big dream of something that you can do or our church can do to further the kingdom of God. The Scriptures say that without vision, the people will perish. And without dreams, I believe the same thing is the case. Dream a big dream. Fill your mind with wonder over what heaven will be like. Have a vision for how we can have a, a little piece of heaven on earth now and pursue that dream. And the last thing that I want to recommend for you to develop a spirit of expectancy is to anticipate. Anticipate. Do you know, as difficult as anticipation is, it's a wonderful time. We may be waiting outside of a hockey arena anticipating a game. And our anticipation builds excitement. And we wonder what's going to happen in that game and who's going to score the goals. We so look forward to it. That's the type of anticipation that we need to build in our life. And so I hope you see how these three things go together, that instead of giving up hope, we stay and we wait. We're willing to wait because we know it'll be worth it. And while we wait, we dream a big dream of what it's going to be like when Jesus returns. And that big dream translates into something tangible that we can do now to further his kingdom. And then we build a sense of anticipation within us that I can't wait to see all of that. Dear people, Israel missed the boat. Israel missed the boat. The Messiah lived among them in the first century. And they didn't see him. To you today, I encourage you to avoid the mistake of the Israelites who were so wrapped up in the oppressions of the Romans and so self-absorbed and maintaining their own religion that they missed it. They missed the deeper importance of life. Can that happen to us? Can we be so caught up in the effects that this pandemic has had on our life can we become so self-absorbed of all that we're missing that our focus is just on us and not on the hope that we share that Jesus will return? May Isaiah's words be a reminder to us today so that we are ready when the trumpet sounds and time will be no more, when Jesus returns the same way that he left riding into the clouds. This is our hope. On this, the first Sunday of Advent, I ask you, do you have that hope? Because that hope begins with a commitment that we make to Jesus Christ. We will never anticipate we will never wait we will never dream a big dream if we first haven't developed a relationship with the author of that hope Jesus Christ Jesus invites you today in the midst of your life to come into relationship with him
He said, confess your sins and I will forgive them. I paid the penalty for them. And once you confess your sins and ask for my forgiveness, you will have a relationship with Almighty God and will be filled with hope that will get you through these difficult times. If you'd like to begin a relationship with Jesus, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I ask that you would forgive me for the wrong that I've done. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin, and I ask that you would pardon me from the penalty. I desire to have a relationship with you to be adopted into your family. Thank you for the assurance that your word gives that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us. And so, O oh God, I want to be part of your family and I want to have this hope today. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I invite you to phone the number on your screen and someone will be there to take your call and counsel with you, providing you with some resources on how you can have and deepen that relationship with Jesus Christ. For you, those of you who would like to dive deeper, I invite you now to switch over to our Zoom room. The link is on the screen. You can copy it down and come over, or you can find that on our church website. Uh, we would love to have discussion with you. I pray that you would have a great week, that you would enjoy uh, the Advent season, and that you would be filled with a sense of expectancy this week. Stay safe, and God bless.